Welcome back, everybody. He first appeared on TV back in 1983 in a series called Reggie. And she had a starring role in the still beloved Little House on the Prairie, which debuted almost a full dec decade earlier in September of 1974. Individually, Timothy Busfield and Melissa Gilbert have had successful and storied careers, not just acting on television, but acting on stage and in the movies. They've also worked behind the camera. And recently, the married pair joined forces with actor Jeff Daniels to form a company called Grand River Productions. The first movie to come from that company is on the film festival circuit now. It's called Guest Artist. <laughs> I have a contract that pays actual money. You are going to God knows where. Michigan. Wherever that is. Jeff Daniels plays the unprepared playwright Joseph Harris, who has made his way to Michigan where he's been commissioned to do a play at a local theater. This guy shows up and uh, he hasn't really he hasn't written. He hasn't written anything, no and, and he wants to go back to New York. And the kid that's there to pick him up is going to lose his job if he doesn't bring this world-class playwright to this theater to do this play. This feels like one of those places you go only if you have to. Does it feel that way to you, Walter? I can't. No, not at all. In fact, I grew up here. Escape. The film was written by Daniels and is the first production to come from the newly formed Grand River Productions, an intentionally small company run by some big names in the business. Well, the idea was, to st we didn't want to start a company in which we had to hire 15 different people to do 15 different jobs. We have three people that can do 15 different jobs. And in the movie Guest Artist, you know, Melissa did the sets, uh, I did the costumes, uh, Jeff wrote it, I was the line producer. So the idea of being mom and pop, you know, uh, was kind of exciting in, in a way, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's sort of the impetus for, for our whole company and, and also giving people that whose work we respect the opportunity to move up in their particular field, whether it's in sound or the camera department or the directing department and the assistant directors. A lot of people had the chance to work in jobs they haven't before, and it gives them a little oomph and credit and a little push further in their careers as well. The goal for Gilbert, Busfield, and Daniels isn't necessarily to be churning out massive movies one after the other after the other. We're not looking for a development deal. We're not looking to jump into that world where we have a lot of cooks in the kitchen. But it's more to find the films they want to make and to make them, knowing they'll continue to do work outside of the company. One of the things that Tim talked about was how our company works, that we all have so many different hats and are able to do so many different jobs within the company, but we are also working journeymen, actors, directors, who have to work um, on more lucrative en enterprises, let's say, uh, in order to be able to do these independent films with no budget and, and in a short amount of time. And so our schedules get really locked up really fast. She's in development already. I'm in, got jobs booked up and through September. Jeff's on Broadway until November. Uh, and then he's got a series after that. Their careers have kept them busy pretty much from the beginning. Busfield broke into the movies playing Poindexter in Revenge of the Nerds. That movie hit theaters in the summer of 1984. Mere months later, he joined the cast of the CBS series Trapper John, M.D., playing the son of Trapper John. Two years later, the series wrapped and he left Hollywood. And I was disillusioned uh, a little bit and it was early in my career and uh, I said, I'm just gonna start this equity theater touring schools. But then he got the script for 30 something. Now, funny story about that. At the time, he looked 20 something. The casting team wanted to see him, but he told his agent he needed time. I said, I can't go in there, I gotta grow the beard. And so she called back and said, the appointments are filling up, I'm afraid you won't get in. I said, I need another week, I'll never get it. If I don't, and I was pulling the hair out of my face. <laughs> so I got it to a certain length and I went in and read and I got it. He earned his first Emmy for that role and it was on that awards night in 1991 that Gilbert first got a glimpse of him in person. I, the first time I, I saw you that that I noticed you was at the Emmy Awards the year you won, the year I was there doing the Michael Landon tribute. Busfield remembers first noticing his future wife on television when she powerfully portrayed Helen Keller in the 1979 television version of The Miracle Worker, opposite Patty Duke. 
but most know her best from an earlier era as Laura Ingalls Wilder on Little House on the Prairie. I want our own horses, Pa. I know half fine, but they're just too worn out to go on. It's a role that she cherishes. It, it, for me, it's my Little House on the Prairie is my childhood. That's it's just part of who I am. The, the, the television show itself is like the most elaborate home movies anybody ever had for almost for 10 years of my life. So it means one thing to me and it's very personal and it's, it's just, it, it is, it's just my family. And then there is the added thing that I get when people tell me how meaningful it is to them. When people remember episodes of Little House on the Prairie that opened their eyes to something or taught them something or made them feel better about something that was happening in their own lives. Those are the things, when, when I hear about those things, that kind of take my breath away a little bit. Mm. Fascinating couple. All right, we're going to have more of our interview with Timothy and Melissa tomorrow. And he's talking about his role in Field of Dreams, his job as a professor, and they're sharing some things that we did not know about them. You can also see them in person in Connecticut on Friday. The people at the Connecticut Film Festival are bringing them to the Housatonic Community College Performing Arts Center. That is in Bridgeport. Again, it's on Friday. There's a red carpet event at 6 o'clock in the evening, followed by a screening of the movie and a Q&A session with them at 7 p.m.